Uh, one thing, key weakness of the attempted truce on Friday uh, was that it allowed military operations by Israel inside Gaza. We heard the Hamas leader, Haled Mashal, saying, listen, Israeli forces were operating there, so we responded. Uh, this one would seem to have that same weakness here. Uh, what do you think the chances are of this ceasefire holding? Well, it doesn't look very good, honestly. I mean, a, a ceasefire requires that, that both sides uh, cease fire. And so if they're still operating militarily inside the Gaza Strip and, and firing the way that they did, particularly today in Rafah, at, at, um, uh, you know, with heavy artillery at all of these civilian, uh, civilian houses, you know, this is certainly not a ceasefire at all. Uh, a ceasefire means that there has to be an end to fire. Uh, and usually, you know, unilaterally declared ceasefires are not, not, going to, not going to stand for very long. They have to be agreed to by both parties with clearly defined terms, with clearly defined zero hours uh, as well, and with enough time before those zero hours so that um, everybody can get word of it and so on, and so that everybody can b abide by it. So, you know, this approach to unilateral ceasefires um, you know, it would be great if it did work, of course, because the civilian population, particularly in the Gaza Strip, is facing a humanitarian catastrophe. Um, but I, it doesn't look like it's going to work or be reliable if the Israelis are going to continue operating inside the Gaza Strip. But to be fair, Youssef, you need a pause to begin talking, because w when you have this carnage every minute of every day, it it's simply hard for the two sides to sit down and talk about how they're going to talk, talk about how they're going to find a way out. So certainly there must be some value uh, in something of a ceasefire, even if it doesn't cover the entire territory? Well, certainly that if, if, if in fact people inside the Gaza Strip somewhere are able to get access to humanitarian aid and supplies and have some sort of relief from the horrific attacks that uh, are befalling them, then yes, absolutely, that would be great. But in terms of whether or not this can actually move the situation forward, it's unlikely uh, to do so if the parties are going to continue be, to be exchanging fire in certain parts of the Gaza Strip. What we need here is direct and immediate international intervention to bring this uh, to an end. And I, I don't think it can be left to the parties themselves because you have this massive imbalance of power between one party and the other. And uh, of course, the Israelis being that stronger party can constantly use their position of power to have their way in the Gaza Strip. And that, that's not a formula for a successful ceasefire. You need intervention and you need an end to these attacks in Gaza. Yusuf Benair, thank you very much from the Palestine Center in Washington. I want to bring in our Bob Baer as well. Uh, he's CNN national security analyst, also former CIA, and had uh, in his role in the CIA contact with Hamas, studied them very closely. Uh, you know, this Bob, at risk of sounding like a pessimist here, but you know, th is this not the complete breakdown of the process here? As if even for a ceasefire, it's unilateral. The two sides weren't talking even about a seven-hour ceasefire just to allow some aid to move around the Gaza the Gaza Strip to some of those stricken families. I mean, w what prospects does this give for something that's going to be a more lasting way out of this conflict? You know, Jim, I agree with you. There's none. I mean, there's, there aren't the elements of a real lasting truce here. It's both sides. Are, it's, it's like two boxers. They're just going to slug it out until they both go down or one of them goes down completely. And, you know, and I, I've got to add that the longer this goes on, the wider impact it's going to have across the Middle East. Don't forget, we have you know, if you like, fellow travelers fighting in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq. Um, the, the, I've never seen the Middle East this bad in you know, 35 years dealing with it. Um, and this has a huge effect on it, on these regimes. And the fact that countries like Saudi Arabia are staying out of it, as is the United States. And we do need humanitarian assistance in there really fast, or, um, you know, it, it's, it could turn into something much bigger. You know, Poppy, Bob makes a great point. It's just, it's almost hard to keep focus, right? Because we'll talk about yeah. Syria, where the death toll continues to amount every day, you know, even in, in bigger terms. And in Gaza, you have Iraq going on, you have tensions in Afghanistan, and now this. Absolutely. And before we let Bob go, if you're still with us, I do have another question for Bob. We talked about this a bit yesterday, but I think it's really critical when you look at Hamas's ability to continue to operate here. It has lost the support uh, of states across across the Middle East, except for Qatar. And there are reports from some and, and some sources and experts saying it is, it, it is losing its ability in terms of its supply chain. Uh, how much of a risk does that pose to Hamas? And do you get the sense that they are just willing to go all out here? You already have over 1,800 civilian casualties all out until they literally run out. 
Well, well, Poppy, I think you're absolutely right. This is sort of their last hurrah. The Egyptians are really going after these tunnels where they've been supplied before. Uh, the Iranians have cut way back on supplying Hamas with weapons. They have been using sophisticated weapons these last two weeks, anti-tank weapons, mortars, um, various explosives. They're running out. So they're going to they're gonna get what they can now, and they're not inclined to stop now and give up these weapons because this may be their last chance. Hmm. So they, are, they intend to fight to the finish as well as Israel. Yeah, and you heard that from Khaled Mashal, and it, frankly, you heard that also from Benjamin Netanyahu in his address publicly yesterday. Appreciate the expertise, the insight, Youssef Munir, and also Bob Baer. Thank you. All right.